guys, welcome to Math School Chronicles. Today we are going to discuss about anatomy and how to study anatomy in medical school. Now anatomy is one of the most crucial courses of your medical school career. So make sure that in your basic sciences years, your anatomy is clear to you. So that in the, in the next years, in your clinical science years, you can be good at surgery and other uh, fields that are very closely related to anatomy. Now, the first thing that you will need to study any course is a good textbook. Now, the textbook are usually recommended by your own professor, by your own medical school. For my medical school, we were recommended Clinical Anatomy by Regents by Richard S. Mayer. Now, this is an excellent book because it is very to the point and precise. So if you have your lecture notes, uh, you can do very well with, uh, with your lecture notes and this book. Uh, which is very precise. It has all this information written in it with radiographic anatomy, surface anatomy, clinical points, um, figures, and it has every single thing that you must know as an undergrad student, as a grad student, and you must know in anatomy. So it's very precise and to the point. But it's not very dense though, and that, that is why you will need your lectures before you read it, because um, everything in it is like a perfect review after you're done with your lectures. So I use this book pre and post lectures. So I use it to have a little bit of re uh, a preview before I go to my lectures. And when I'm done with my lectures, I read it again to make sure that everything is hammered in my head. So this is the textbook that I recommend as well because this is the one that I use and this is the one that I have the most experience with. As you can see, it is literally torn down. And it's, it's, it's beautifully written. Highly, highly recommended this textbook. Now there are other textbooks that you work that you might be recommended by your own medical school, um, such as the two other most popular choices uh, in my uh, in the place where I study are R.G. Last Anatomy, um, which was very very popular. I don't I didn't like it that much to be very honest. Uh, I thought it was just okay, so I don't know if, if, but if you want to use it, you can. It's called The Last Anatomy. The other textbook that is uh, very, very highly recommended in Indian medical schools um, mostly is B.D. Chaurasia's Human Anatomy, and it is in two volumes, so you have a, hand, uh, a region applied upper limb and abdominal and pelvis volume, and then you have upper limb and thorax volume, lower limb, uh, I think they have just problem, lower limb volume. So you have two volumes of this, and this is that huge. Uh, I don't recommend this one as well, because because it's, it's written like points and notes. It's, it, it feels like PowerPoint slides and not a textbook. That's what I feel about it, and it is just, um, I don't think it's written really nicely, but a lot of students do use it, so if you want to check it out, you can check it out. I still recommend Snail um, textbook much more than I recommend B.D. Chirassi and Argilas. But if you want to check them out, you can check them out. The one book that I do recommend, which I don't have right now with me, except for the snail, one is the is Grey's Anatomy, not those that huge Grey's that used to be very popular in the olden days. The new student Grey's, which is that thick, and it's beautifully written. So if you want to use a textbook other than the snail one, go for the Grey's Anatomy uh, and not B.D. Chirassia or Argilas. You can use them as a reference book if you want. So uh, that's all about textbook. Now there are review book. What is a good review book that you might need uh, to do well? I highly, highly, highly recommend BRS Gross Anatomy. It is a very, very popular textbook that is a lot of students use. And it's just very beautiful. So it has all this um, topic described in bullet points that you can use. And then every, at the end of every chapter, we have, I'm sorry, yeah, we have all these high yield points that you can use as a quick review before you go for your sub stages or any of your tests. And it's, it has all the highly condensed information, all the high yield stuff. And at the end of each chapter, we have uh, these multiple choice questions, a review test with the answers and explanations so that everything that you have read in your textbook and your lecture notes may be hammer, uh, can be hammered down and can be memorized much more easily. So I highly recommend a review book. Uh, you can use any review book, but BRS is the one that is most highly used and it is most highly appreciated as well. Uh, one thing more is that I, I do recommend um, review books more than anything else. Like review books are very, very important to study any course in medical school, but always remember that review books are review stuff, are, are, are based for review. So you, do, you, you don't think that if you can completely skip 
uh, your textbook and your lectures and just study from a review book, you would be able to do good in exams. That is not that, that is not how it works. You have to do your lecture notes. You have to do your textbook. You have to you use other resources and make sure that everything about that to particular topic is clear in your head. And then at the very end, you will go to your review book to see that you have studied every single high yield stuff in that particular topic. And by doing a review test, you you can test yourself and see if you don't if you're not clear on certain points. So this is how a review book works, and this is the one that I recommend the most. Moving on, now you will need a reference book. Now you can use Beatrice Charasia, Argilas, and Gray's Anatomy as reference book, but this is the one that I use. Look at the size of it. It cannot be your textbook. It's massive. It's so, so dense. It's called Clinical Oriented Anatomy by KLM. A lot of students did use it as a textbook in my medical school, like the Gunners, so-called. But I don't think that's a good idea. I scored better than them. That's because it has so much information. And then you have to do other courses as well in your medical school life. So. Um, I'd, I'd rather recommend it as a, as a uh, reference book. So if there are some topics that you are quite, that, you're not, uh, that are not explained very well in your textbook or your lecture notes or other re online resources, you can, use a, uh, you can use this as a review book because it has everything in so much detail that I don't think you will be needing anything else. This would be just enough. So I use it as a reference book and then I also use its charts uh, before I went to exam because the charts in uh, Snail are not are good but th these charts are much more detailed and are much more organized in this book so I use the charts in there as well and of course I use the clinical uh, sections of this book to you know just to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite clear with my clinical oriented side of anatomy so I also use its clinical sections a lot other than that the theory I did from my snail book because it is a huge because the KLM is such a huge book and I don't think using it as a textbook is a very bright idea but if you want to use it as a textbook go ahead all the best and let me know what happens I hope everything goes well now the last thing but the most important thing that you will need is a good atlas of human anatomy um, I recommend Frank Natter's atlas because it is Beautiful. Uh, it has all the pictures that you will need to do good in your dissection hall, uh, all the pictures that you will need to do good in in any uh, you know uh, in any stuff related to anatomy. It is the illustrations are beautiful. They are all hand drawn, and you can easily see that every single thing is very nicely labeled and very nicely drawn. So I had no problem uh, in finding a good picture. Uh, to relate with my theory. I always had this by my side while I was setting theories that I can see where such certain stuff is and it was very, very fun doing that. So yeah, highly recommended. The illustrations are beautiful. Uh, Frank Natter's atlas is very, uh, are very, very popular, so buy it. If you want to spend some money on one atlas, then uh, Frank Natter is the one that I recommend. So these are the books that you will be needing. Other than that, there are uh, very beautiful YouTube channels uh, that do such great work in explaining so many various anatomy topics that I will link in the description down below. Uh, check all of them out, they're amazing. Uh, second thing is the online resources. So Biodigital Human, uh, Teach Me Anatomy and stuff like that helped me a lot to study anatomy which I will be, uh, which I will be Give, uh, which I will give in the description down below and you can check them out as well. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, so please like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.